Hello, and welcome to the Rejuvenation Roundup podcast, where we explore the latest in life extension and anti-aging science with a dive into a month's worth of insights and new breakthroughs. This podcast is a combined effort of the Life Extension Advocacy Foundation, which operates Lifespan.io, and Future Grind, a podcast that explores the ethics and implications of emerging science and technology. I'm Ryan O'Shea, and I'll be your host. It's now September, and it's time once again for our customary appointments with the most interesting updates from the world of rejuvenation research. So let's get started. Remember, to find out more about any of these topics, you can visit lifespan.io forward slash roundup. We are offering early access to all of the videos from our 2019 conference for our Lifespan heroes. If you want to see the talks before they come available to the public, visit our website and become a Lifespan hero today. As an example of some of the individuals that you could hear from, here's a segment from our interview with Ocean Biotechnology's Chief Science Officer, Dr. John Lewis, about his company's approach to addressing senescent cells and cancer. Targeting senescent cells, uh, we want to do it in, in healthy aged individuals to extend their health span and lifespan. Uh, it's really important. Many drugs have off-target effects, so it's really important for a, a senolytic or a senescent cell killing therapy to be highly selective. So uh, we have a platform that can be uh, given systemically to the whole body, uh, and its key is its high selectivity. It kills cells based on what they're thinking, uh, not what they look like, which is really important. And so we're, we have a gene therapy that's systemic, activated based on specific hallmarks of senescent cells. So the, the genetic approach, gene therapy approach, allows us to be exquisitely selective. Uh, where small molecules have to find a target that's typically on the outside of cells and recognize it from the outside in, uh, you know, it's the equivalent of necessarily, say, attacking all the, the redheads in the room. Uh, we're, uh, because we're able to get inside the cell and hijack the cell's own transcriptional programming, uh, we can basically program a software to precisely kill those only those cells we want to. We believe that's a superior approach. So as we learn more about the biology of senescent cells and, and uh, the ways by which they, they form, we're, we're learning that there's a lot of uh, heterogeneous features about them. Uh, so the one thing, the point I'll make is that our technology has been shown very clearly in animal models to ameliorate age-related effects and diseases. Uh, but also make the point that our gene therapy approach is highly flexible. So if we find a certain cell population we don't want to kill, we can change the promoter to, to adapt. Or if we want to find additional cell population we do want to kill, we can adapt to that as well. Our first-in-class compound is targeting uh, an engineered version of the P16 promoter. So we'll be hitting uh, many of the P16 expressing populations, but not all. And, uh, and as far as we know, the, you know, the effects really tell the story. We're able to see a substantial increase in lifespan and health span uh, and an amelioration of health-related age-related degeneration. You know, our therapy is, is concentrated on clearing out the damage caused by aging. Um, there's, you know, there's a definitely a place once the senescent cells are cleared, uh, if, the, you know, if the body isn't, doesn't provide enough stem cell regeneration to, to have additional rejuvenation therapies that will enhance and promote that rejuvenation step. Uh, uh, of curing the damage from aging. Uh, we actually artificially age animals by giving them chemotherapy. Chemotherapy, on average, probably ages the average patient by 10 years. So this is a, a really important target for us. And not only the amelioration of uh, chemotherapy-induced toxicity, uh, but cancer itself. So cancer and senescent cells use some of the you know, same pathways. So we can actually use the system for selectively killing senescent cells to also kill cancer cells. And that is, that's important because that's our key pathway to the clinic. So our first indication for this uh, class of therapy will be in oncology. Uh, we're geared up, uh, building out our manufacturing, uh, consulting with the regulatory authorities, and, and our goal will be to, to attack and destroy solid tumors. Uh, aiming for a first-in-man clinical trial in oncology uh, in the second quarter of next year. We also caught up with our very own LEAF president, Keith Comito, at the conference. Here are his thoughts on the longevity movement, which might make you want to become a lifespan hero if you aren't already. Personally, uh, I would like to think that you know, any person over time would gravitate to the idea that life is good and is worth living and thereby as a natural extension of it, I guess pun intended, that more life 
is a good thing, not just for you, but for the people you love and anyone who is wanting to be alive. So to me, it's a very simple answer, you know, like life is good and I want more of it for everyone who wants more of it. Well, basically, I think others should care about this because we're all in the same boat. You know, if you're not selfish and you can see with clear eyes, you know, even if for whatever reason, you know, you didn't want, you know, to be immune from, to cancer, if you're a compassionate person, you'd want to at least extend that choice to other people in the world. So. For people you know, who want to, to help what we do, I mean, the simplest thing is just share the word. You know, part of the main message of what we're doing is to just communicate to the public that this is a feasible area of research and needs to happen uh, and is a great social good. So the simplest way is to just help to radiate that message out. And obviously, if people want to get more involved, they can contact us, fill out our volunteer forms. And you know, the one nice thing about life <laughs> is that it's the broadest thing in the world. So that means anything that you do has a place in this movement. We're at the tip of the spear of a, of a global movement. I don't think it's crazy to think that we could see some initiative that's like a stand up to cancer, but aging focused, happening worldwide in five years. And I would like to think that LEAF would be a big part in making that happen. There are a lot of problems in the world, and aging is definitely one of them. In a recently released episode of the Life Extend show, titled Aren't There Worse Problems Than Aging?, Nicola Begala discusses just how bad aging is on the list of the world's problems, and questions whether such a list should exist at all. Here's a taste of that. It's worth noting that brushing off an issue because there are supposedly more serious ones is a seriously bad idea. So bad, and yet sadly widespread, that it's got a well-deserved place among the most common logical fallacies. It's known as the appeal to worse problems. The first obvious problem with this kind of reasoning is that whether something is or isn't worse than something else is subjective. You might think that problem A is worse than problem B, whereas your friend might think the opposite, and unless you both agree on a way to measure the gravity of A and B once and for all, neither of you is right or wrong. Secondly, even if we could rank all possible problems in the world in order of gravity in such a way that everyone agreed on this classification, Problem B might be less serious than problem A and still be a tragedy. On top of that, a list of all problems in the world would be very long, and neglecting all the problems that didn't make first place until the problem at the top of the list was solved would most assuredly result in a ton of different problems going downhill on us while our backs were turned. For example, think of what could happen if we paused solving global warming until world hunger was totally eradicated, or vice versa. If we are talking about global problems that cause suffering and death, and aging is most definitely one of them, this ranking business gets somewhat shady, morally speaking, because it would imply that not all types of suffering and death are equal. Some of them would be less worthy of attention. If you said that curing malaria should be prioritized over giving starving children enough to eat, or vice versa, you'd probably end up with a bunch of people at your throat, and their outrage would be completely understandable, especially when you think that we're more than capable of working on multiple problems at the same time, and that there is no need to put starving children or malaria patients on a waiting list. Besides, if we ever decided that all other problems can wait until the most serious of them has been solved, then it seems reasonable that anything that isn't even a problem can wait too. Therefore, we should shut down the film industry or all amusement parks to divert all time and resources we have to the solution of problem number one, and you can probably see more than one reason why that is never going to work. This shows why appealing to worse problems isn't a way of discounting the importance of another problem, including that of aging. You can find the full episode, as well as another new release focused on biology fun facts, on our website. We've posted some new interviews there as well, including one with Dr. Daniel Ives of Shift Bioscience, in which he discusses epigenetic clocks and the ways in which small molecules and mitochondrial dysfunction can affect them, and another with Sarah Constantine of Daphnia Labs, in which she discusses how they use Daphnia, which are tiny organisms commonly used for research, to screen for potentially beneficial molecules. LEAF's Steve Hill has authored a new article focused on population, with a declining fertility rate in Europe, Asia, and Latin America coming alongside increases in life expectancy around the world, 
a rapidly increasing percentage of the global population is now suffering from age-related diseases. This bodes ill for economic prospects and the quality of life of older people around the world, unless something is done about aging itself. Another new article from Steve Hill weighs in on the MIT Technology Review Embracing Rejuvenation Research, a topic that was once considered unscientific, and discusses how we got from there to here. In late August, QB3, the University of California's hub for innovation and entrepreneurship in life sciences, hosted a free event, Aging and the Single Cell, where researchers from the Chan Zuckerberg Biohub presented results on the topic of aging at the cell level. And now for our research roundup. A new study from several well-known researchers at Harvard Medical School shows how reprogramming the epigenetics of cells in the eye was able to reverse cellular aging and address age and injury-induced blindness in mice. A recent study on mice with autoimmune myocarditis, a disease involving inflammation of the heart, was recently released in the journal Cell Reports. It shows the impact of heart inflammation on the types of immune cells that are formed in the heart, and could have a significant impact on our understanding of cardiac aging. Some strains of E. coli are considerably more dangerous than others, and researchers at UT Southwestern have discovered a link between harmful strains and a risk of a deadly cancer, along with a potential method of reducing this risk. A new study published in August by Cell Press outlines multiple ways in which epi stem cells can be reprogrammed back into a fully pluripotent state, paving the way for a better understanding of epigenetics. In a recent study, a team from the Neurobiota Research Center in Korea has discovered that reducing gut dysbiosis partially alleviates the cognitive impairment associated with Alzheimer's disease in mice. This may seem puzzling as the gut and the brain are separate and relatively distinct organs, but the gut and the brain are connected through the microbiotic gut-brain axis. A team of researchers in Singapore has discovered that a common protein in the brain prevents, and can destroy, the protein aggregates associated with Alzheimer's disease. More research will need to be done to determine whether or not it is feasible to develop this protein as a therapy for preventing or treating this deadly disease. To find out more about the topics mentioned in our research roundup, visit lifespan.io forward slash roundup. And now, for some news nuggets. Organovo, a biotechnology company currently valued at $45 million and most well-known for researching bioprinting technologies, has recently announced that it is suspending its artificial liver tissue program due to concerns about the program's inconclusive data and the potential time, cost, and risks that would be taken to redevelop the tissue. The company is currently looking for alternative projects to take this program's place. Kazoo Ventures the startup accelerator associated with the Forever Healthy Foundation has recently announced its support for Lift Biosciences, a biotech company currently developing a new generation of cancer therapies that use neutrophils, a type of immune cell, to seek and destroy all types of solid tumors. The Forever Healthy Foundation has also launched Rejuvenation Now, a new project dedicated to analyzing NAD repletion therapies. The main goal of this project is to separate good science from poor evidence and snake oil, Ultimately, Forever Healthy plans to build a database of risk and benefit assessments for various supplements. Billionaire biotech investor Jim Mellon's company, Juvenescence, which seeks to create technologies to treat diseases of aging and to increase human longevity, has announced the successful closure of its $100 million Series B round. This brings the total that Juvenescence has raised in 18 months to $165 million. XPRIZE, a nonprofit known for organizing competitions to encourage technological development for the benefit of humanity, has recently published the Future of Longevity Impact Roadmap, which explores possibilities for the future of longevity and details why we must begin to take action today. The report was developed in part through the efforts of LEAF President Keith Comito and LEAF board member Elena Malova. The project was made possible through the sponsorship of Sergey Young. Another of Sergey Young's projects, the Longevity Vision Fund, has announced an investment into Exo Imaging, a medical imaging startup committed to providing physicians a single handheld probe capable of imaging the entire body in 3D. This brings Exo Imaging's fundraising total to nearly $50 million since its launch in 2015. Leucadia Therapeutics, a partner of the Methuselah Foundation, announced the launch of Project Cribrose, a 2,000-participant Alzheimer's study that is currently enrolling subjects. 
They are seeking participants between the ages of 18 and 90 years old who live near Riverside, California, including both those with dementia and in good health. Check out our website for more information. As reported by Fight Aging, the World Health Organization's proposal draft for their Decade of Healthy Aging 2020-2030 is rather disappointing in that it doesn't focus much at all on fostering biomedical research on treatments attacking the root causes of aging. Rather, it appears to focus more on traditional approaches aimed at mitigating the effects of aging, such as developing age-friendly environments and ways to provide long-term care. The International Longevity Alliance has put forward a proposal for amending the draft to be more in line with the current scientific consensus. The Cell Age Database, which tracks biochemistry that contributes to senescent cells, is now part of Human Aging Genomic Resources, a comprehensive database on human biology. The 2019 installment of the annual Basel Life Conference is taking place from September 9th through 12th in Switzerland, bringing together the most eminent researchers in the field of life sciences. The Aging, Drug Discovery, and Artificial Intelligence Symposium will take place at Basel Life and will feature well-known figures in the field of life extension, such as the former president of the Buck Institute, Dr. Brian Kennedy, in Silico Medicine CEO, Dr. Alex Zavarankov, and SENS Research Foundation CSO, Dr. Aubrey de Grey. Leafs' Elena Malova is giving a talk at Biohacking Conference Moscow on September 19th. Her talk will be focused on the motivation behind the efforts to achieve healthy life extension. That's it for this episode of the Rejuvenation Roundup podcast. Thank you very much for spending another month with us and for your help in the fight against age-related disease. Whether you're donating, spreading the word, or simply listening to our content, we appreciate your help. Remember to subscribe, leave a review, and post about it on social media. This will increase our reach and introduce more people to the importance of life extension science. Don't forget, you can get additional deep dives into science, technology, and futurism on the Future Grind podcast. Find out more at futuregrind.org. Once again, I'm your host, Ryan O'Shea, and on behalf of the team at LEAF, we wanted to thank you for joining us. We hope to see you next time on the Rejuvenation Roundup podcast. <laughs>